program. I'll Hello. beg to focus today on the program. It's a law. It's called the Corporate Social Responsibility Bill 2023 that uh, if passed, the issue of corporate social responsibility by companies at a certain level, especially medium-sized companies, will no longer be um, just out of goodwill, perhaps. It, it, it will be mandatory under the law because there is no law guiding that operation according to what the proponents of this law are, say, are saying. Now, let me, just before I introduce my guest, let me show you something uh, about some part of that legislation. I, I had a piece of the bill, the draft bill of this particular legislation that has to do with what is expected of each company and the size of the company. But first, let, maybe let me introduce my guest, Professor Obiageli Orogbo. She's the chair, House Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility and member representing Oka North and Oka South Federal Constituency. Madam, thank you so much, Prof, for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, I, I wanted to start with some piece of that uh, legislation. Uh, but maybe if I, my producer can get it to me if I throw in my first question. I, I know that uh, your legislation has to do with uh, corporate social responsibility, ensuring that companies are now mandated to carry out corporate social responsibility in a very accountable manner. That is my understanding. Uh, but my interest, so that the audience will understand a, some kind of a brief or what this is all about. Section 5, subsection 1A of the draft that we have seen says that every company having a net worth of 500 million naira or more, or turnover of 500 million naira or more, or a net profit of 100 million naira or more during any financial year shall constitute a corporate social responsibility committee consisting of at least three or more directors, out of which at least one director shall be an independent director. As soon as my producer can get me those uh, slides out so that the audience will see what I'm reading. But again, I don't need that, them to have an idea of what you're doing. But my first question to you will be, um, why should an act of goodwill be mandatory? Prof, that question is for you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, first of all, we need to understand the concept, the philosophy, and the implementation of uh, CSR. CSR is not, is not a new uh, concept. Um, I can assure you that uh, a lot of companies operating in Nigeria have the CSR units, programs. Um, but um, why we are looking deep into CSR is because um, a lot of companies, first of all, the, the Company Income Tax Act gives the companies the leverage, if I may say it that way, to do a deduction of their expenses from before the, the um, income tax is as assessed. And um, most of these companies come up with humongous claims of having provided one form of uh, um, investment, we call it goodwill or the other. These are claims. And at the end of the day, these things, these claims are not true. They are not regulated. They are not monitored. They are not reported. And this is causing so much revenue loss to government and by extension to the nation at wide. So there is need for this CSR to be regulated so that companies would not keep claiming. With the, this, with the, I mean, with, with the number of companies making so much money, turning out so much profit yearly from this country, we shouldn't be talking about infrastructural issues, infrastructural development. If these companies in their various constituencies and their various places where they operate are actually giving back to the society 
are actually doing, taking into cognizance the impact of their operations in their society and coming up with roads, um, uh, water, infrastructures, uh, investing in education, health sector. I think our country will be a better place today. But because secretly, this is something that has been happening in this nation, but nobody knows about it. And then the Speaker of the House of Reps, Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, decided to form a, to bring up a committee that we look into the activities of these companies so that we will close up those ends where we are, the country, the nation, the government is losing revenue and then we will be able to bring up a lot of things because government cannot do it all. Government cannot provide everything. And with the state of our nation, we need all hands to be on deck to build a better Nigeria. So that is why it's essential. All right, Prof, when you say government is losing revenue, I, 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 I'm trying to understand what you mean by government is really losing revenue. And this is what I mean. Uh, before you came up with this bill and the people that sponsored this bill, did you do an estimate in terms of losses? And when you say government is losing revenue, if the companies are paying taxes and levies and all of that, which are statutory, uh, how, are they, how are you losing revenue as government? Maybe an education for the people. I said, yeah, remember I said that um, there's a company income tax, the company income tax act has a provision for expenses incurred in CSR, these donations, whether you call it donations, whether you call it the goodwill, whether you call it infrastructural development, whatever the companies are doing in their own ways to, in, the, in, in Nigeria, they, they claim it. So at the end of the time, they, the tax they pay to government is not actually what they're supposed to pay. And they don't, and they end up still not providing those infrastructures. Mm -hmm. So if you're supposed to maybe provide um, a basic amenities of worth maybe 100 million, and you, you claim you provided 100 million in your audited account, but what you actually did is 10 million. That means that that company will not pay, you know, the, the, there's a deduction in the tax. So that deduction, which is done, this is claimed, you know, makes it a loss to government. Okay. So if that's supposed to do, like, over the period, we have been able to engage a whole lot of companies over the period, in the last, say, seven months. And you see that many of them, you know, claim in their audited and not audited accounts that they've provided this and this and this. And at the end of the day, when you go there to oversight those projects, they claim they provided, which is the consideration for the tax rebates, they are not provided. Some provide, some don't even provide, some provide inadequate, and it's not commensurate, it's not what actually they claim All right. in their audited accounts. So that is what I mean, what when I say that government is losing revenue. Which is why I also added the bits. I needed you to expatiate on it, which is why I added the bit of the losses in your estimation. Because when you're doing things like this, uh, we need to see a study uh, so that we can know whether we should raise alarm or we should keep quiet. Do you have an idea of how much losses we've been cured? In this country, we have a lot of multinational companies operating in this country from different parts of the world operating in this country. Government is losing in millions of dollars revenue. Some of them are operating secretly. I, can, I won't mention for today's purpose, I won't mention them because we have been able to you know, invite them. Some, of it, some even run away from you know, engaging the parliament. So um, what government is losing is in millions of dollars. In the purpose of this is actually to let the public know that there is um, a public hearing that is coming up next tomorrow at the National Assembly by the Corporate Social Responsibility to consider the bill. It's a public hearing. We want, uh, we want all the critical stakeholders, the business uh, stakeholders in the business, the civil society organizations, the um, community uh, representatives, and Every critical, cons every consent citizen to make themselves available. 
At that hearing, we'll be looking at the critical issues with CSR, and then we'll, we'll, the parliament does not know it all. The all parliament right. does not know it all. The parliament is open for constructive, robust engagement, robust debate on issues that concerns Nigeria. This right. parliament, the 10th Assembly, is a people-oriented parliament. And that's all why right, we Rob, have... If, if I'm the, going, so that I... the, the, the parliament... My apologies. Uh, so if I'm a button, so I can get as many questions as possible. Uh, so at what stage is this bill in the House of Representatives, if I break it down for the people? After, um, the, the, the bill has gone through the first reading. Okay, first reading. Uh -huh. All right. I hope you can hear me, though. So b I'm before I ask my me. next question, um, let's get back to the slides. Uh, let's see what the law, the proposal you're making. Uh, Section 5.1, uh, you propose and give a figure of the size of companies that we're looking at in this, in this uh, context. For non-extractive companies, you, you have to explain all of that for the people. Non-extractive companies, if my producer can get me that first slide, 5A of the Act of the Bill, Yes, this one, that uh, every company having a net worth of, uh, of 500 million naira or more or a turnover of 500 million naira or more net profit of all of that and all of that during the financial year shall constitute a social responsibility committee consisting of at least uh, three directors, out of which at least one director shall be independent. If, guys, if you can go back so we can get this straight. Now, the board of, the, of every company referred to in subsection 1B shall ensure the company spends in every financial year at least 2% of the average net profit of the company during the three uh, immediately preceding financial year in pursuance to this policy and all of that, uh, many things. But the third one is what I'm concerned about. Uh, five, section 5B, 53B says, provided that the company shall give preference to local areas uh, around where it operates for spending the amount earmarked for corporate social responsibility activity. So, these are some of the highlights of uh, that bill. Uh, but there's another part that has to do with extractive industry. So maybe you break it down for us. Let's begin to get into the bill. Uh, what do you mean by extractive and non-extractive? What size of company? Who is exempted? And all of that. Before I ask my next question, Prof, that's for you. Okay, so the bill already has clearly stipulated the categories of, uh, you may wish to play it back again for the viewers to see, the bill already has explained clearly um, um, categories for the 500 million and above of net profit and that of the 200 million naira and above. We know what the extractive industry means, you know, and then the non-extractive uh, industries like we have the manufacturing industries, the uh, pharmaceutical and um, the um, what they call them again, um, the, the banking industries, the financial industries, the whole lot of industry, um, companies operating in the country. So for those who are not in the extractive, we have the petroleum industry, we have the mining industries, for those the extractive. So that is what we mean by that. Uh, so my interest, why I decided to read that piece of legislation that you propose, is the uh, percentage you're talking about. For the ones that are the extractive industry, uh, you say in the financial year, they will, there's at least 5% of their average net profit. We also know that, <clears throat> excuse me, the PIA proposes 3% for host communities. So if you put it together, we're talking about 8% if in the financial year. Uh, wouldn't you think that that would be perceived that, uh, as hostile to corporates at the end of the day in terms of business environment and levies and taxes and payments they have to make? The bill, your, the document you're, you're looking at, which we're discussing, is a proposal. The document is a proposal. That is why we have a public hearing. We have sent out invitations to companies we have sent out invitations, written all the companies, the banking, the all sectors of the economy. We have sent out letters. We have published in the papers that there is a public hearing to consider this bill. The bill is a proposal. So 
it is the responsibility of these stakeholders in these sectors to make themselves available on Tuesday for a very robust, comprehensive deliberation debate on the bill. And then it's not a final position. When they come with this cause, we are people oriented. We want our industries to survive. We want our companies to, to perform well. We want them to stay and perform optimally and also give back to the society, to the people where they, are, where they operate. So it is not my responsibility. It's a bill, it's a proposal. It is still in its skeletal, skeleton. It's a skeletal, skeletal uh, bill. You know? So it is, their, it is their own duty to make themselves available on Tuesday for a robust conversation, a robust debate, so that we will not do our pluses and our minuses and then take a final position. Together as one I, nation, I, I, as Nigerians, as stakeholders, as critical stakeholders, we take this decision concerning this piece of legislation. It's a proposed piece of legislation. By the time we all have this debate, on Tuesday, we'll now come up with a position paper. So it's not a final, it's not a final um, paper. Uh, absolutely, that's why it's called a bill. Uh, and that's why we're engaging you, uh, who is at the vanguard, you're the chairman of the committee, to bring to the fore the expanded conversation on national or international television. So a uh, company already struggling with uh, high interest rate to borrow money. Uh, they have all kinds of levy. The current administration is doing all it can to harmonize taxes. And um, all of these elements are affecting, you know, the outlook and perception of the business environment, which must be, which must be in the conversation, which is why I'm asking uh, some of these questions. And I also understand that even the media is going to be involved in all of this, as long as your income is at a certain level. So from your conversation within the House, how many, from the first reading, how much support have you gotten and what are the dissenting voices saying? Um, like I told you, this is a proposal. We don't have a dissenting voice yet. But Tuesday, we'll see if we have a dissenting voice. We're all talking, we're all looking at building a nation that we'll all be proud of. CSR is not a new concept. It's not, a, it's a, it's not, a, it's not some, anything new. It's, some, it's, it's, an, it's a global practice. And we want to have, give it an international status. It is a global practice that we need, all we need to do in Nigeria is to just come up with a framework that will monitor, that will regularize, that will report, and then see to the enforcement. Like I told you, we are very much aware of the difficulties. We understand the challenges the companies are going through. We are going to be extremely creative in the decisions that we're going to make. That is why it is not the parliamentary decision. It's not our decision. It is the decision of the public, the stakeholders, the, the petroleum industry, the extractive industry, the manufacturing industry, the banking industry, all industries, all the industries that con contribute to the development of our economy. Like I said earlier on, we cannot leave this to government alone to do. At the end of the day, they are borrowing the taxes, the fluctuations in the exchange rate. But at the end of the day, these companies are still making profits. I have, I have, I'm, I'm privy to the, 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 the profits these companies are making, even in the midst of the crisis, the economic crisis we are going through in the country. So, but we are not going to, you know, you know stifle and strangulate the company. No, 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 that's not what we're going to do. We are human too. And that is uh, why we right. need them to be present on Tuesday to participate vigorously in the discourse, in the debate in National Assembly on this matter. This is a very critical, critical, very, very critical bill that will impact those companies and also the nation, the citizens, our citizens. We are, like all I said right, earlier, right. we're people oriented. We all want right, to support prof, the companies. And prof, if I may, but we're going to quick It's not going break. to be a problem. Yeah, we're going to go, we'll go on a quick break. When we come back, I'll just take a, a few more minutes to conclude this conversation because uh, we're also going to talk about incentive to support these companies rather than always, in their view, taking from them and also the penalties that may be meted out on them if they, if they default on this mandatory uh, CSR policy. We'll be right back after this break. Join us again. 
Welcome back. I've been talking with Professor Biagele Orobo, the chairperson, House Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility, and member representing Oka North South Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. Prof, uh, thank you so much for coming on the program. So as we do wind down, let's, let's come in with a few more uh, things we would like to find out from you. Uh, in terms of uh, capacity to be able to monitor compliance, how do you want to achieve that? Because I understand that in the proposal you're making, a company that has that size, 500 million naira, whether it's net worth or profit and all of that, will have, that's for the non-extractive, will have a committee uh, to monitor implementation. But at the, uh, from the legislative end, how will it be properly monitored to make sure that companies apply to this? And how will this benefit the average citizen of Nigeria, which is the core of all of this? Okay, so for the um, compliance, monitoring compliance, the, the, the committee, um, we have several committees in the National Assembly, in the House of Reps, that monitors compliance of all uh, several agencies, companies, and, and so be it. And then um, for compliance, um, the first thing we want to do is to l legalize the, um, the CSR initiative. First of all, legalize it. And then for compliance, we have, the, I think, if you look very well at the bill, look detailedly, you will see that the bill is also proposing the establishment of a CSR commission. So the committee, with the support of the CSR committee, commission, if established, or a, even a, a unit, a department in the Corporate Affairs Commission. We we'll all work together seriously to see that there's compliance. And that is why there's actually a need for punishment. Any law that you want to enforce that doesn't have a punishment will not be obeyed. And of course, you trust that Nigerians um, it's, we find it difficult. It's only those who are quite civil who know what they're doing that actually go out of their way to obey laws. But the important thing is that we seek to ensure that we build a better Nigeria where the common citizens will have access to good roads. If all the companies in Nigeria think back, give back, build roads in their, in their localities where they operate, provide schools, build schools, healthcare system, I think it's Nigerians, the populace, that we will have, they will, you know, they will be relieved from the difficulties that they are already going through. I think we, the Nigerians should be given, you know, um, should give in space to breathe. They should breathe. Nigerians should breathe. People are going through a lot. Let them only think of the tomatoes they will have to buy. Let them only think of the food they have to... Now it looks like food is, is luxury. Look at how much a bag of rice right. is today. How many people can afford it with the current salary scale that All we right. have? How many people can buy it? All right, how many people can actually feed their families? So with this initiative, with this bill, if it's passed into law, it will support government initiative. It will support, support government plans to right, build uh, roads so that all they're thinking is about what they will eat. They won't have to think about hospitals. All right, bro, if you can hear me, if I'm coming, coming with hospitals. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're totally out of time. I must thank you so much. Uh, uh, but some persons will always say that the National Assembly itself has to look inwards. It's, it's a great idea to make sure that everybody lives up to responsibility. But even um, that hand is also pointed in the direction of you and your colleagues in terms of cutting cost of governance, in terms of, uh, what do you call it now, um, the projects you do, constituency projects that some, of, some lawmakers don't carry out, even though it's earmarked for. Some do, some don't, you know, that is being reported and all of that. So people will be looking in that direction. So... Uh, some people will say the House itself and the NAS generally may have to look inward to do and lead by example. Does that make sense to you as well? I disagree with you completely that we don't execute our projects. I, I don't, I disagree. I said I, some, I, I did not say all of you. I disagree totally to that because most of the people who are in National Assembly want to come back again. 
and everybody is looking for because as far as Nigerians are concerned, for you, you were you were not expected to do execu executive jobs. Okay, There's, I disagree that they don't execute their jobs. I, it's, it's not true. I'm yet to see a member right. of House right, of Reps that out will of be time. given a job and he will not. What would he be doing if he doesn't execute the job? All and right, then bro, it's your responsibility totally to, to hold, hold, our, hold your leaders accountable. It's our All responsibility right. to oh, hold oh, our oh, leaders bro, accountable. Prof. Uh, Biagelik, uh, hold your... That's, that's why we elected you in the House and the uh, Senate, to hold them accountable. That's your job. Checks and balance. It's not our job. It's your job. They've elected you. I didn't say all of you. I said some of you. So let's be clear on that. So if you go to budget and all of that, you see what I'm talking about, where they identified it. So if you say hold accountable, you are the first which will point to, not us. But I must thank you for coming on the program, Professor Biageli Orogbo, uh, Chair, House Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility. And we'll be looking out for that hearing and see how it plays, plays out eventually. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you for having me.